Hi, this is Mark Hibben for Technomicon Media with a video review of the new iPad 2. And I happen to have one in my hot little hands right here. This is actually the 64 gigabyte uh, AT&T 3G version. And I have to say that uh, it really is gorgeous. The industrial design guys at Apple do a fabulous job. Uh, in this review, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison and uh, for that purpose, I happen to have a first-gen uh, iPad that uh, is also a 64 gigabyte uh, 3G version. And uh, in this case, we'll be doing a comparison of real-life performance for activities such as web browsing, watching videos, playing games, using maps, uh, between the, the first-gen and the second-gen units. Uh, and we'll also look at some of the unique capabilities that the iPad 2 has to offer, uh, mainly in the form of these uh, uh, new cameras. There's the little backside camera. Here's the front side camera right here. Now, I hope you'll find this a more meaningful way to compare the performance of the first and second generation iPads than, than running a bunch of benchmark tests. Uh, generally, the benchmarks show that the iPad 2 is crunching numbers between 50 and 100 percent faster than the uh, first generation iPad. And this is to be expected because the new A5 processor is a, a dual core ARM design. It should perform roughly twice as fast as the uh, first generation iPad processor, the so-called Apple A4 processor. And in fact, uh, graphics benchmarks show an even greater degree of improvement. But do these benchmark tests really translate into real-life performance improvement? Let's find out. The older iPad has been upgraded to version 4.3 of iOS, so both the old and new iPads are using the same version of iOS. Uh, one of the nice features is that you can now set a preference on the rotation lock button. In this case, uh, we have set side switch uh, to lock rotation with the option being audio mute. Let's look first at web browsing. We'll open identical pages and we'll compare the time to open and load the page. First, the New York Times. And keep in mind that both iPads use the identical wireless end router to connect to the internet through a 15 megabit fiber optic link. So what limits download performance really is the processor in the iPad. And the page is now loaded. Next we'll look at one of my favorite sites, Technomicon Beta. We'll see how fast that loads. pretty fast. Let's also take a look at good old Apple. And the site's loaded. Next let's check out the GPS and compass features that come with the 3G units. This is assisted GPS, and unfortunately, I'm not in a locale where uh, the cellular network can provide assistance, but the GPS still turns out to work reasonably well. It's searching for my location. And it came pretty close. It's probably within about uh, 10 or 15 yards of reality. While the first gen iPad Air did seem to be a little bit less, maybe only about 5 yards. There's also a compass feature, which we're checking out. And as you can see, the iPad 2 actually does find the correct direction, whereas the original iPad has an interference problem that makes the compass unusable. Next, let's look at an application that's pretty computation intensive, speech recognition. Dragon has a dictation application. 
So I'm going to tap and uh, dictate a few lines. This is a test of the Dragon speech recognition application. I actually did pretty well. Now there's a trick to this, and the trick is that the speech recognition isn't actually going on inside the iPad or the iPad 2. It's actually being done as a cloud application by a server someplace that we're connected to via the internet. And since the cloud computer is doing all the heavy lifting, the performance of the mobile device really isn't that important. All the mobile device has to do is stay connected. Dragon's speech recognition app wouldn't be much use if you couldn't actually get the text out of the application and, and into some other document. Uh, it's actually fairly convenient to uh, copy the text, flip out of the application, go into some other word processing application like Pages, paste in there, and it's pasted in. Next we'll look at video playback on the iPad in one of three different ways. Uh, the uh, resident videos that uh, play back through the video player, uh, Netflix, and YouTube. So let's start with our video player. For this comparison, rather than going side by side, we'll ping pong back and forth. Pardon my choppy editing. My video doesn't really do the video quality of the iPad justice in either case. I can't really see a discernible difference when I look at the videos. Next, let's look at Netflix, and here we'll be looking at the time to launch Netflix. As well as movie playback. So it seemed like the iPad 2 version of Netflix launched a little faster, but once you found the movie that you wanted, the movies both started up at about the same amount of time. And once again, in terms of video quality, I can see no difference between the two devices. And finally, let's open YouTube. There's the uh, iPad 2 introduction. And it opened very quickly. Games are probably the one area where the improved processing capability of the new A5 processor really makes a difference. I'll give you a demonstration. We'll launch Infinity Blade. And uh, I can't really play the game, but I can at least show you the improved video resolution. It may be difficult to tell in this video, but the uh, rendering resolution is quite a bit higher, even though the screen resolution for both devices is the same. And 
I think I'll give up at this point rather than try to fight the uh, the evil knight. Finally. Now we'll look at the uh, same game on the original iPad. It does launch quite a bit more slowly. It takes a lot longer to get through this introductory period. And the uh, video resolution is not as good. It may not be visible from my video, uh, but I can vouch for the fact that the rendering resolution is, is not as high as on the iPad 2. Last but not least, let's look at the video quality of the iPad 2 backside camera. It's actually quite good out of doors when there's plenty of light. But as you'll see in the next shot, indoors is not so good. The backside camera records in 720p high definition video, but the image quality certainly doesn't come up to the standards of a standalone video camera or even a good webcam. So here's the video recording capability on the front side camera. And as you can tell, it's uh, not very high resolution, not particularly good video. But it's adequate, and it's certainly adequate for FaceTime. Uh, it's a much lower resolution uh, video camera than the backside camera. Well, that's what we have on the iPad 2 for now. Uh, keep in mind that we'll be performing additional testing as we go along, especially on that uh, new HDMI video adapter uh, when that becomes available. I haven't been able to get a hold of one yet. Now, would I recommend the iPad 2? Mm, that really depends. You know, I love my iPad 2. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll be perfectly honest about it. I, I probably am not objective. But even then, I, I would have deep misgivings about recommending it as an upgrade to an existing owner of a, an iPad. Uh, the reason is the screen. It's a good screen, you know, don't get me wrong. It has good color and good contrast. But I would gladly have traded the slimmer design for a high-resolution screen that could natively display 720p video, let's say. 720p being 1280 pixels by 720 pixels. And this only makes sense. After all, you know, the iPad 2 is capable of recording 720p HD video, uh, why don't you allow the user of the iPad to actually view the video at its full resolution on the iPad? Uh, I'm still puzzled by Apple's decision on the screen, uh, and I hope we don't have to wait an entire year uh, for an upgraded screen. Now, without the HD screen capability, the iPad 2 just doesn't seem to offer enough performance improvement to justify it as an upgrade for someone who already owns an iPad. I'd, I, I'd have to say, wait for a better screen. I think it'll be worth it. However, if you don't already own an iPad or if you just have to have some capability of the iPad 2 that uh, you can't do without, such as video recording or the superior gameplay, uh, there's really nothing else in the market. Nothing else even comes close. And I think in that case, you have an easy buying decision.